Hey y'all, it's Jaden. Today I'm going to be giving you a rundown on how I became the student manager here for the D1 Michigan State University women's basketball team. My eyelashes. Start on how I'm even in the basketball world as a five foot one Asian girl. So it all starts off with my dad training, mentoring, and coaching me throughout childhood. He didn't just do it for myself. He did it for my older brother as well as my two younger sisters currently. His success in training us has led him to a basketball program. So through this basketball program, he coached and trained a lot of my friends growing up as well. Within everybody I know, it's all basketball, basketball, basketball. And I just love basketball and I'm very passionate about it because of him. Let's get to the point. I was a four-year varsity high school basketball player, two years at my all-girls high school and two years at my affluent public high school. Once I transferred there, I became starting point guard and after my junior year, I was like, basketball isn't for me anymore. I do not want to be trying to play in AAU to catch a scholarship. So I should just focus on my career in education. In school, my dad mentioned that maybe I should become a student manager. It was just a random thought during lunch. That summer, this is what I did. Instead of reaching out to D3, D2 schools to play, I reached out to the D1 schools. I reached out to all schools such as UCLA, Arizona, DePaul, you name it, for a span of like 24 months. I know I was literally 16, 17 years old, sending them out messages without even having a college application sent to their school. I received some emails back, specifically from Iowa, Indiana, and Illinois. I was like, you know what? I want this more than anybody else. I'm going to be writing them a handwritten, handwritten thank you letter for responding. I also got responses from the University of Louisville and the University of Maryland. So in my community, Glenbrook North, Northbrook Glenview, going to top schools such as Michigan State University was definitely the goal for the child. And so I was definitely influenced to go to a big school because and if my affluent community is doing this, I might as well just do the same. So I actually got to have a Zoom meeting with Liz Honiger from Indiana Women's Basketball uh, the October of my senior year in high school. I only applied to four. I didn't want to stress myself out. I listened to my heart and stayed with the Big Ten. I applied to the University of Indiana, the University of Iowa, Michigan State University, and the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. Yes. Michigan State University was definitely a last minute application that I sent in. It was just too expensive. That was the main reason why it was on the bottom of, of my list. I get all of my applications sent back, got into all the schools, but my top choice, the University of Illinois Air Bremen is Champagne. And the only reason why I'm saying this in this video is because I want the world to know that your failure is not going to define you and that everything happens for a reason. We were doing college tours and I already the college tour in April of 2022 and it was the only one I did my parents kind of forced me <laughs> to choose Michigan State University since they're like we drove all this way and you're not going to be choosing Michigan State University just choose it I mean my parents were like listen to your gut in okay April 2022 it was the NCAA 2022 championship and I the night of that while my parents were on the couch I accepted my acceptance letter to Michigan State University. MSU did not even give me a response to me wanting to become a manager, but I chose Michigan State University 
for the lifestyle. MSU has a better diversity rate compared to Indiana and Iowa, which is always what I've wanted to experience as a Filipino American. And also, the party scene here is immaculate and it's one of the top in the United States and that's something that is important to me just branching out of basketball fully itself. I wanted like a party setting as well as a sports setting regardless if I didn't get the manager position on. We have Tom Izzo here. Obviously I want to support Tom Izzo's team. If I'm obsessed with March Madness, he is one of the most successful basketball coaches in all time get on campus and I manifest meeting anybody on the Michigan State University women's basketball team. So September 1st, 2022, I'm at 1855 Marketplace and I meet Kamaria McDaniel, which is our grad student here on our team for the past season. And uh, I said, are you on the team? And she, it was new too, cause she, went to Penn State and Baylor prior to this and then I just made a bond with her and got her contact and she's like I love your enthusiasm not a lot of people have that in life that day I went back to my dorm she called me and said you know what I'm gonna bring you to the office that day I met a recruiting operations person and she loved my enthusiasm I was just talking about EYBL stuff with her and how my dad's basketball program played against the teams in EYBL the past summer for the Chicago Nike tournament. And the second week of a, that month in September, we have a manager, potential manager meeting. And it was a room filled with all men. And I was like, where are the girls here? I've definitely, I'm not gonna get this. Research shows that boys tend to get sports positions over girls that's a lie there were actually three other girls that they were older than me so it intimidated me even more well my boss was talking the whole time and she basically was just running us down during that manager meeting in the film room i sat front row like this and i just smiled the whole time um <laughs> the meeting they're like we need to schedule interviews so i go up on the front table schedule my interview which was five days after that let's get to the interview so this 20 minute interview i'm literally wearing this shirt i'm not gonna lie to you i don't know why i wore a crop top to interview i did my best to cover it. i was like this but this prior to this meeting i was i was calling my parents i was like i need to talk to you it was this 20 minute meeting in the our conference room in the complex and it wasn't just my boss it was all of the people that run the program not head coach Susie Merchant but literally everyone I sit down and literally they start looking at me up and down they basically were taking notes and looking at my college personal essay as well as my resume the essay was about why we wanted to become a manager for the program asking me so many questions about why i want this position they bring out the my coach's letter on my successes of basketball and how he's going to miss coaching me out to the table this was a letter from my assistant coach from glenbrook north high school and it just shows how much i love basketball and how much people love me for it as well as my necklace i don't have it on right now this is my louis vuitton one it was number 10 and i got that from my other coach on the varsity that i just left they asked about it and they're like, I just, I'm just telling you, like, I'm very loyal to my past team and I'm going to bring that to this team. I also showed them a photo of me when I was younger playing basketball. This was me in fifth grade and I was at the Nike World Basketball Festival in Chicago. And I told them, I don't want to let this child down. She's so passionate about basketball. She just wants to stay in this world. <laughs> I cannot let her down. I'm on campus and I feel lost without the game of basketball. I've cried multiple times because of the fact that I'm not around basketball. I, I decided not to rush into a sorority this freshman year in order for myself to manifest becoming a student manager for this team. The 
20 minutes, longest 20 minutes of my life ends and one of our grad assistants named Tra walks me out and says, I hope to see you soon. Tryouts number two actually doesn't happen. So we just cut it down to tryout one and sorry, like I'm like overstimulated right now. My um, boss is like, so you're going to be receiving a call Friday morning. And if you don't, if you do, that is good news. I'm in this bed, just woke up, depressed just because I have no basketball in my life. And literally, she calls me, says, good news, Jaden. You're going to be the Michigan State University student manager for all four years. So I've been manifesting this since I was 16. And um, I called my mom after that. I texted my old teammates. I said it to my coach, just my small circle of people. And they congratulated me. It felt so, like, it was such a relief. I said, I'm going to be get, doing another video on what I do as a student manager coming up next soon because I definitely have learned a lot post-season just reflecting on everything and, such as girls empowerment, um, Title IX, um, but yeah, that is a story of how I became a student manager for a D1 school. I want to add in the fact that I actually was the only girl that got the manager position this year. And I outbeat tons of other older girls that are juniors and seniors. I And my boss wanted to hire younger, the younger generation of people. And I'm a freshman and I'm a girl. So it just makes sense for myself to be a girl student manager on the women's basketball team um out of the 15 of us managers there's only four girl managers and i'm one of them and i'm the youngest one i want to talk in the other things i want to talk about in the future video is my thoughts and my career after i get this bachelor's degree here in kinesiology and minor in sports sports business management here at michigan state university um there's just a lot of things that i feel like I want to tap into career-wise because of the student manager position that I got here. It really has changed my outlook on my future. That wasn't even the plan. It was just to be saving my mental well-being from getting caught up in the wrong field of things that doesn't make me feel whole.